Hello my friends and welcome, my name is Dennis and I'm the Boeing 737 type rated pilot. Let's review the accident that happened to the Alaska Airlines Boeing 737 MAX-9. As you can see, there is the big hole in the fuselage, the emergency exit door separated, but let's review this case more precisely. I refer to the Aviation Herald website, they are awesome in collecting the information all about the crashes, aviation accidents, incidents and other events. So they gather the information, also the initial information which we now have, and later on they refer to the investigation results. In our case we have the Alaska Airlines Boeing 737-9 MAX, it's the longer version of the Boeing 737. The registration is over there, the flight was AS1282 from Portland to Ontario. 171 passengers on board together with 6 crew members, 177 persons on board totally. So during the initial climb from Portland, the emergency exit door was just pushed out probably with a cabin pressure that is higher than the outside pressure in atmosphere the airplane climbed to maximum of 16,000 feet. So the huge hole in the fuselage was created and for the excessive pressure it takes like a couple of seconds to release to the atmosphere and equalize with outside pressure which is at 16,000 feet. I wouldn't say it's very low but it's marginal. The oxygen masks dropped because they drop at 14,000 feet and aircraft performed the descent down to 10,000 feet. It is the safe altitude for you to stay for unlimited period of time in unpressurized cabin. Obviously pilots declared emergency and reported about depressurization of the aircraft. They didn't have to dive down with emergency descent like if they were at the very high altitude. If they were at flight level for example 410, pilots would have just a few seconds of the consciousness after the explosives decompression. So what they need to do at first is to put the oxygen masks on. After that establish the communication between the pilots and start the emergency descent. At 16,000 feet, even in unpressurized cabin, you can fly for quite a long time. Even without the oxygen mask, but still the procedure should be conducted as by the book. So down the oxygen mask and then perform the descent to 10,000, that is what they did. So they came down to Portland performing the safe landing in around 20 minutes after departure. Everything was done very fast. As the replacement for this aircraft, the airline put the Boeing 737-NG, Boeing 737-900, registration this one which flown to Ontario with a delay well actually there is no big difference in the fuselage construction of those airplanes I would say no difference especially concerning the emergency exit doors passengers reported a boy sitting in row 26 had his t-shirt sacked off him while his mother was holding on to him to prevent him being sacked out too wow well luckily the seat just near to the exit wasn't occupied because the part of the seat also was sacked out from the airplane together with the door construction itself. It is a plug-in type of the door which is actually very robust and safe. On this particular airplane it was deactivated because of the airplane configuration. You see the Boeing 737 MAX-9 and the Boeing 737 NG-900 have the extended fuselage construction to accommodate more people inside. That is why also the special tail skid is installed on those types of the airplanes and usually they go with the package of the short takeoff and landing performance. It helps to prevent the tail strikes on those long airplanes. But also they have two more emergency exits. This feature was done purely because of the certification requirements. So everyone on board should be able to evacuate the airplane in 90 seconds using 50% of the emergency exits. That requirement was impossible to achieve without putting two more emergency exits. But in Alaska Airlines case, they do not require those two emergency exits, that is why they were deactivated, because they carry less passengers. They decided to stick to this configuration, probably providing more leg room for their passengers. In my airline we had two of the Boeing 737-900s with restricted configuration like in Alaska Airlines and the full capacity Boeing 737-900 which has the same configuration as the Boeing 737 MAX-9. So in two of our airplanes those exits were active and they do require the emergency inflating slides. But here again they were absent because of the deactivation of those exits. So it is the extra feature of those long Boeing 737s. This particular 
aircraft was a brand new, Alaska Airlines decided to ground all of their 65 Boeing 737 MAX 9s for the further inspection, and 25% of their airplanes have already passed the inspection and everything was found normal there. So we have the latest information here in yellow. John Lovell, who participated the investigation of the Ethiopian Boeing 737 MAX crash, will join the investigation of this case. For now we know that a mid-cabin door plug departed the aircraft resulting in rapid decompression. So clearly it is a technical reason for this event. For me personally as the Boeing 737 pilot, well I know the construction of those doors, they are very robust. They are pushed against the stoppers then the cabin pressure rise. Those plug type doors are used by Boeing for a very long time, I believe since Boeing 707. So it is very rare to see this case happening for Boeing, but nevertheless it is happening. And yesterday the FAA released the Emergency Airworthiness Directive for the Boeing 737-9 MAX aircraft. I think they should have including the Boeing 737-900. The operation of the aircraft is prohibited until the inspection is completed. It means that all of the aircraft around the world of those aircraft type should be grounded until inspection is done. Actually it doesn't take lots of the time. And it's not for all of the MAXs but just for Boeing 737-9, the longer version. The FAA says that the circumstances could be dramatic for the flight safety operation in case door separation, it could result in passenger or crew injury, the door impacting the airplane surface and loss of the control of the airplane and obviously decompression. And here is the airworthiness directive issued by FAA and everyone should follow it. So basically the maintenance action is required to check those doors. Still we are out of clue of what led to the plug and the door separation. As for me it's the factory defect, so the production line should be checked. Well anyways, the outcome of this event is good, everyone is alive and the crew did a great job landing this aircraft safely. Thank you for watching and have a great time.